All right, so I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I'm gonna start using Remix a little bit more on my projects just because I got a little tired of Next.js's caching and just the slowdowns of the next dev server. Even recently, I've been noticing my next dev server has been like crashing randomly. It just runs out of memory. So there's just a lot of things that just been bothering me about developing a next React server components, the server actions being in experimental mode still. And I decided to switch over a little bit to Remix just to kind of test the waters and see, are there better ways to build out web applications? Are there more efficient, productive ways to do it? So far, I've been really liking Remix. Remix is very similar to the Pages router in Next.js. And I'm assuming at some point Remix is going to bring in React server components and just ruin everything just like Next kind of did. But overall, the way Remix works is you have this like root folder. And this is kind of like your layout in Next.js's app router where you have your main page where you can kind of set up your providers and wrap all of your subpages right here. Um, so if you've used React Router, you know that this is just a React Router component called Outlet. It's kind of the same as doing children in Next.js's app router. But the Outlet is basically automatically going to take your nested routes here and it's going to inject them into the Outlet. So the way this works on this application that I've been working on is if I were to go to browse, notice that this header up here is defined in the root. Okay, so we have the header here in the root. And then underneath the header, we have a div that just adds a little bit of padding. And then everything here is going to be the nested layout. So that's how that works. And then inside of your routes, you define your different pages. So the way that you can define an index is you do underscore index. And that is going to be the, the main slash of your route. Notice up here, there's just nothing here. It's just a slash. So that loads in the index and it puts it inside of that outlet right here. Okay, we've got all this code. Now, the way that Remix works is you have the ability to basically just write normal React. You export a default React component here, and that's what it's going to use for rendering out your page. Now, everything in here is just client-side code. So you just write React like you normally would with a single page application. You can use uh, TRPC, you can use React Query, you can use whatever you want, React Foreign Hooks. There's no like use client, use server. And that's something that was really bothering me about Next.js is like, although it's cool that we can use server components, I just, I feel like my productivity and the ability to quickly refactor code actually took a, a step down with React server components. Cause now I can't just put files wherever I want. If I have like this React server component and then I need to create a client component, I basically have to go here and make a new file. And then I have to go to the top, remember to put use client, Sometimes I forget to do that. I go to my app and it's broken because I forgot to put use client. I waste time with that stuff. Overall, Remix is just basically very similar to like writing a Vite React app or a single page application, although it does have the ability to opt into server side rendering. So what do I mean by that? So let's look at an example of server side rendering. So we have this other route where it's rooms slash room ID. The way this works is you do a dot instead of the slash. But if I were to go ahead and go to like my collection and go to rooms, let's just click on the duck. Notice that this is rooms slash the room ID here. Now, in order to get those parameters that were passed into the URL here, you have to do something called a loader. So this is what runs server side. The loader, when you export it, Remix is gonna look at the loader and say, hey, I need to actually do some additional data fetching so that I can send this in to your component. Now, instead of the thing here that you return getting passed in as props, you have to do something called a use loader data. Okay, so everything that you return here, when you call use loader data, this is a function that we're just calling it, you get back the same thing that's returned here. So notice that data is gonna be an object that has a room ID. But technically you could do Prisma calls here. You could say like call Prisma, get database info. You could do like third party REST API calls here. If you wanted to fetch all this data on the server and then pass that down into your component so that the initial rendering will have all that set up in the HTML, you can easily do that. Okay, now technically I'm not doing that in this application because I'm using a database as a service, a backend as a service. But if you did want to bring in like Prisma or have a database, you could do your database queries inside your loader just to have your page kind of initialize with some uh, initial HTML. Now everything in here, nothing's too different. I will state that this is using React Router behind the hood. So you have to basically bring in some React Router hooks. For example, use navigate is the way that you can navigate around your application. 
Um, so I just call navigate down here. If I ever need to dynamically change the route, I just do it like this. Pretty straightforward. And anyone's used React Router, I think version 6 would know how this kind of works. Now metadata, you basically just export a constant called meta, and you can kind of set up titles, you can set up names. I think in root, there's another one that we're doing to basically export links. So for example, we can export a style sheet here by just saying export const links. All right, let's just go ahead and clean up some of these yes, lint issues. There we go, our code is cleaner. Yeah, other than that, I mean, like if you have like utility functions, you can put them in like whatever file that you want. This is just like my convention. You can put components over here and import those into your routes. Overall, I would say Remix is a simpler approach to building out an application. There's some, so in Remix, something I don't have in this application yet because I haven't found a need for it with my backend of a service being convex, is you can export an action. And what this allows you to do is you can actually have your running code invoke that action directly. Okay, so like, for example, you can grab this form here, and if I were to paste that in here, there's a Remix form component you can bring in, and what you can do is when this form is submitted, when someone clicks on this button here, it's actually going to automatically call this code, and you can do whatever backend logic that you want. You could do another database insert, third-party API request, whatever you want. You can do this on the backend. You can set up authentication to verify that the request from a certain user is authorized, and overall, I mean, this is like the same thing that Next Server Actions um, supports, but it's not experimental. This thing has been built in to the framework for a long time, and so it doesn't feel like you're doing some hacky thing that you shouldn't be doing yet like it is in Next. This is just built in the Remix. This is how it works, right? So if you do want to do like real uh, form actions and like server actions, check out Remix. It has a lot of cool stuff. Overall, um, if you were to ask me my main opinions, I still like Next.js a lot. I just think it has a lot of rough edges and they need to fix a lot of stuff. The dev server, I've, I've noticed it be super slow on my computer. I don't know why it's just slow. Maybe they'll fix that soon. Um, I've noticed my dev server crashes. It runs out of memory often. So as I'm saving files, after about the 20 or 30th save of a file, my next application just crashes. I've noticed my next page just have like all the CSS messed up after certain saves. Also in Next, the caching. This is the thing that I hate most about Next.js is that the caching, they went overboard in caching everything and it can make it very hard to debug various issues with the client side router and the client side cache. I have made videos about this in the past um, and until they fix that, I'm just not really interested in kind of going back to Next, honestly. Um, there's so many times where like I'll do something and I'll navigate around in Next.js and like there's just it's showing old data when I don't want it to. I think if you are going to use Next.js, I think using it with the use client in every single file is probably the best approach. If you use Next.js with the app router, I should be specific, or just keep using Next.js with the pages router and I think you'll get the best user experience. Very similar to Remix. Yeah, you, you won't get the server action, so you'll end up having to like make a REST API if you want to do that. Now, something that I do miss about Next.js is that Next.js has a lot of functionality for caching. <laughs> I know I just said I hate the caching, but at the same time, Next.js has a very easy way to basically mark a page to uh, revalidate after like five minutes. Or you can say cache this every hour and then like, I think it's called ISG, incremental static generation. So like sometimes I'll have a page where I know it doesn't have that much changing data, like a landing page. Maybe it has a little bit of dynamic data here and there, but I wanted to just go ahead and just have my server recompute that every hour when someone makes a request and cache that on a CDN to make it as fast as possible with loading. Um, I don't think that's possible with Remix, but overall it's not like a, a deal breaker. Um, the Remix docs, I'm not, um, there's, there's times where I'm like looking through here, like it took me five minutes to try to figure out how to dynamically navigate to a new page because like, I would say the docs are kind of whack. I, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of what's going on here in these docs because like if you go to use navigate, it just tells you to go read React routers. And I'm like, okay, uh, somewhere in here, like I was trying to find routing, use navigate is not defined at all. They don't tell you anywhere how you dynamically change routes. So when I first got into Remix, I didn't understand that like they just use React router for everything. But I think they should maybe still walk newbies through like me that when you want to do something simple like get the the current location that i'm at or navigate to a various page some of the most important aspects like that should be in some of the uh like the blogs so like 
Like Remix has some pretty good tutorials here for making a blog or an application, but like, again, use navigate is not defined here. Uh, if I look at the app tutorial here, is use navigate here? It's not. So like some of the things, it was kind of hard for me to find. This is the only example I can give, but it's like most of the stuff is just like go read another library because that's how we're, we're doing it here. Um, but I wish I could have just typed in like dynamically navigate. Anyway, I've been having fun trying to build out this little application using Remix. So far, I'll say like if you have learned React and you've built single page applications with React, going from React to Remix is like a super easy transition. Okay, going from React single page applications to Next is a little bit more convoluted from what I've seen. Uh, that might anger some people who really like Next.js, but uh, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. So I'll keep on making random update videos about Remix as I learn more about it and build more stuff. But overall, I think it's pretty simple to use and I'm happy with it. All right, if you guys want to join my Discord, feel free to click the link in the description. It's a place you can go and ask questions or try to get help if you're stuck on anything. And like always, have a good day and happy coding.